Notion sprints are a very, we'll say, hidden feature in Notion and not one that I see talked about very often. And to be real, after giving them a try, I can kind of see why. Today, I am walking you through what sprints are, how you can set them up, and my honest take on whether or not you should use them. So what exactly are sprints? Sprints are essentially a group of tasks that you want to complete within a specified time frame. Personally, I would think of these as projects, but Notion suggests creating projects separately so that you can organize your sprints to complete multiple tasks across multiple projects. So before I jump into how sprints work, I want to first show you how to set them up. To get started with Notion sprints, you first have to have a task database. Now this means you actually have a task database that you have converted into what Notion knows as a task database. This means it's going to show up in your Notion homepage. And if you come into your settings here, you can verify that by going all the way down to more settings right here and double checking if it says turn into task database or undo task database. If it's an undo, you've already got it set up, so you're good to go. If you still need to turn it into a task database, I go over this in my video all about Notion Home and how to get that set up. So be sure to check that out to get yours set up. Now, once we have created that task database, we now get the option for sprints here. So what we can do to turn on sprints is go ahead and click this button and then it's going to give you a little bit of information about what it's going to do for you. And then you can click turn on sprints. So what this actually does is it creates two different pages, two different databases, and one is a sprint board and one is sprints. Technically your sprint board is not a new database. This is actually pulling in from your tasks. Your sprints, however, is a brand new database that is related to your tasks. So let's take a look at this portion first so we can get an idea of how to actually set up our sprints. The first thing that you'll want to do is come to the settings here and go back into that more settings, go into sprints, and this is where you actually get the settings for your sprint. So you can select how long you want each sprint to be. You can say when you want it to start, you can also say what you want it to do with the incomplete tasks in that sprint. So maybe you want to push it to the next sprint, maybe you want to move it to the backlog, or maybe you want to keep it in the current sprint. You also have the option to automate your sprints, which means as soon as one is finished, it's going to start a new one for you during those time periods, and then it will do the incomplete tasks here for you without you getting to decide. So definitely come here first and kind of decide what it is that you want your sprints to look like and what you want them to do for you. Now the sprints database is a little bit unique in that it gives you a very specific properties that you can't really change. So if I open one of these sprints here, we're going to see these sets of properties. We have a sprint status which is going to let you select between current, next, future, completed, last, which means this was the last sprint that you did, or past. Now you actually do not have an option to change these. If you try to go into the property, it's going to tell you that everything is locked. You cannot do anything with it. You can't add to it. You can't change it. You can't subtract from it. Um, but you could rename it if you wanted to. Then we have our dates. So this is going to be the date of your sprint. This is also not editable. So if you try to click in here and change the dates, you actually can't do that. So that's why we want to make sure that we come here into our settings first and double check how long we want our sprints to be because that is how it is setting these dates for us. However, as a little bit of a workaround, I have figured out in the timeline view here that you can actually adjust the dates from here. So that is really interesting to me that you can't do it from the actual database property itself. You can only do it from the timeline view, which seems kind of odd. This is where things get a little bit hairy for me, not gonna lie. We also have a view of our completed tasks, which is a roll up. And again, this is locked, but you can delete it. So if you don't want to have the amount of tasks that you have completed showing here, you can actually delete this property. 
but you cannot delete the dates property and you cannot delete the status property. You also can't delete the sprint ID property. So this is using a very specific property type in Notion called the number ID property, which essentially assigns a number to each page that gets added to your database for you. You cannot change that number. It is going to be assigned no matter what. And in this case, you also can't delete it. This will come into play in just a little bit. And so I'll tell you why it's important. Um, but for now, the last one we have here is our total tasks, which is also a roll up. You can't change it again, but you can delete it if you don't want it there. So each sprint comes with a generic template. You can come up here and find that default template. You can actually edit this. So if you don't want it to look like this, where you have the tasks here by status and by assignee, you can actually take that out and redo everything. I personally did that in mine, which I will show you in just a little bit, but this is where you can come and edit what is happening in each of these sprints. So while we're looking at the timeline view, if you actually hover over the timeline, you're gonna see that it does allow you to add dates to the sprints that are showing here in this database. So you can kind of plan ahead if you want to, you can add dates to those, but again, when you go to complete a sprint, it will ask you when you want to start the next one, or if you have the automatic ones turned on, this date may change. Another thing to note is that you can add any property that you want to to the sprints database. You just can't delete certain ones that are here. So now that we have looked at the sprints themselves, let's go ahead and take a look at the sprint board that it creates for us. So the first view we have is our current sprint. This is automatically showing up based on that status property. So as long as your sprint is marked current, this will show all the tasks related to that specific sprint. As an example, let's go ahead and add a task just so we can see what that looks like. This can be our example task. And since we are in our current sprint, it should automatically connect that for us and we can add any other task information that we want to here as well. And now up here where it says complete sprint, we can see that we have zero out of one tasks completed. And if we kind of work it through the line here, once we have actually completed it, it will show that our tasks are finished. The sprint planning tab is going to show you what is going on in each of your sprints. Currently, this is filtered to show all of the tasks that are not complete. And since we just marked that other one complete, it's not actually showing. I'm gonna change that filter just so we can see, but in our current sprint, we have one task that is done right now. It will also show us the next sprint, the last sprint, and then our backlog, meaning these are tasks that don't have any sprints connected to them. And we can also see a separate view of just the backlog here. So again, these are all of the tasks that don't have sprints connected to them. So if we come back to our current sprint and we go ahead and say that we want to complete it, it is now going to give us a nice little summary of our sprint. It'll tell us the tasks that we were able to complete during this time. We can also see what the next sprint is going to be, and then we can adjust the start and end dates if we want to. So there is an option here to kind of change that around if you want, but it's going to go ahead and pull the two weeks because right now that's how we have our sprint set. So now if I go ahead and say complete sprint one, it is now going to update to sprint two. And if we go to our sprints database here, we will see our sprints just as we had before, except sprint two is now current, sprint three is next, sprint four is future, and then sprint one is now last. So essentially what happens with this little protocol is that it changes the current one to whatever you had set as next, and then it creates one for you in the future. You can kind of plan ahead though. You don't have to wait for it to create one for you. If you plan your sprints ahead, what it will actually look at is this sprint ID number that we were talking about before. So that's how it decides what is going to be the next one up and it kind of cycles through that way. So as long as you're being intentional about the order in which you add your sprints in here, this cycle actually isn't super terrible. However, it's not super flexible and I kind of need that flexibility. So I'm not a huge fan of this myself. 
And there is one more thing you should know is that you can only have one sprint at a time, as you can see with that status situation that's happening. There is only one current and there is only one that's going to be up next. Sprints were something that I knew Notion had, but honestly, I just never got around to trying them out and playing with them. I decided to give them a go because I am chronically bad about starting multiple different projects at a time. So I wanted to try to slow myself down and only work on one at a time. So I gave them a try my workspace to essentially replace my projects database and here's what I came up with. Now I am going to be honest with you I am very aware that this is not how Notion necessarily meant for sprints to be used and that is very clear to me because I think there are some issues with the way this is set up. But I'm going to show you what I tried anyway because I do think it is interesting. So here is my projects page now. I essentially just switched out my projects database, my previous one, with the sprints one that it created for me. And then I went ahead and customized these views just a little bit to try to make them work a little bit more for what I wanted to see. So this was the sprints database here. I went ahead and just renamed everything I possibly could to projects so that it wasn't using sprints. It's just not my favorite word and I use projects. So I was trying to make it work for that, but there are still a couple things that say sprint on them. So I can't get away from it completely. I have my timeline view here that is going to show my last, my current and my next projects. And I have added dates to them here as much as I possibly could. Then I have my current and up next view. So this is going to show the current project that I'm working on and the next one. This is all I can get to show here because again, we can only have one current and only have one next. Then I have my future projects here and this is showing all of the projects that I have marked as future. A lot of these were actually things that I was currently working on or things I wanted to have up next when I had my old database going. But part of what I was trying to do here was make sure I wasn't putting my fingers into multiple different projects. And so here we are. But I do think that that is a limitation with this. And I would like to be able to have multiple projects going on, mostly so that if I have team members that are working on other things, I can have those simultaneously going in the background. For example, this is one that I was personally not working on. And so now I kind of have to wait until it comes around versus having somebody else working on that for me. Then I have the table view of all of my projects so I can see what is going on. I added a proposed dates property in attempt to kind of try to plan out things a little bit farther ahead since I can't actually edit the dates property from here, which is frustrating. And I also added a link to my goals so I could keep track of which project went with which goal like I did before. Inside each of my projects, I actually changed the template so it looks exactly like my projects did previously where I have all of my action items and overview and resources and all that kind of stuff. So for the most part, I was able to transfer all of that over okay. However, the number ID situation is really getting to me because I had a plan of what projects I wanted to do in what order, but then when they got added in, they were assigned a specific number. And when I complete a sprint, it's pulling that number in versus looking at the one that I actually want to pull in. So if I had been a little bit more strategic with moving all of my projects over and making sure they got put in in a certain order, I probably would have had a little bit more luck with this, but right now having it go based on the project ID is actually really tough in this case because I was importing things and it just really didn't work for this specific process. Then below that I have what was the sprint board here. So this is showing my current sprint and what I actually need to finish for that. So the little complete sprint button is up here. And then I also have the project planning view. I went ahead and kept that, but it is just showing me the current and the next because I didn't really feel like I needed to see the backlog or the last one either. I will also say having the projects database related to other areas like my business goal planning is a little bit funky. So for example, I had a goal to get all of my one-on-one -on -one packages set up. And as you can see, there were a couple of different projects that went along with that. And with the way that the relation to the sprints board works, 
there is actually a button here to move to the backlog. And if I press that button, I'm not going to right now, um, but if I press that button, it actually removes those projects from the relation here. And I'm pretty sure it sends all of the tasks for those projects that are not finished to my backlog meaning that it is no longer part of that sprint anymore. So I find that function a little bit odd. I wish I could turn it off, but again, I think that's part of having those sprints set up and part of why I'm not sure I'm loving that. So while I was able to kind of create a projects database out of the sprints, I really don't think that that's how Notion intended this to be used. They want you to have the sprints and the projects separately so that you can have a sprint that has multiple projects in it but to me, that's kind of adding another layer of things that I just feel like makes it a little bit more complicated. So what do I like about sprints? I love the button to complete a sprint. There is something so satisfying about clicking on it. And I really like that I can set up the next sprint right after as well. The process of resetting for a new sprint feels incredibly automated and it makes it really easy to jump into the next sprint. But that's about where the list ends for me. <laughs> Honestly, I was super surprised at how much I couldn't customize with the sprints setup. I really think it's because Notion wants you to use the automated version where it will select the next sprint for you and move the unfinished tasks to the backlog. But to me, that sounds like a foolproof way to get behind in your tasks and feel pressured to start the next project without finishing the previous one. I also think that if you're going to be working with a team, you almost have to set it up the way that Notion suggests where you have projects and you have sprints as two separate databases so that you can have tasks from multiple projects showing for that sprint. Otherwise, you're expecting everybody to be working on the same project at the same time, which is not really realistic. Someone's gonna end up with nothing to do. So unless you follow Notion's outline for using the sprints, I think the lack of flexibility makes it kind of difficult to use. I get it because you need some structure there to make that process of completing a sprint and moving to the next one as seamless as it is. But part of what I personally love about Notion is that it is so flexible and that you can customize it to create things so that they work for you, not so that you're forced into a bubble. So my ultimate recommendation, if you like structure and you need a system that is already set up for you, you should give Sprints a try. The setup is fairly minimal and it can be a really great productivity tool. You just really need to be aware of how the full system works so that you can work within those boundaries. But if you're like me and you want freedom and flexibility within your workspace, I would pass on this feature. So going forward, I am going to be reversing my sprint setup that I created with my projects database, but I really want to implement some of the things I liked about sprints. My plan is to create a little button that completes the project for me. That way I can still feel that sense of accomplishment. And I also really surprisingly enjoyed the timeline view. I actually think it'll help me a lot to make sure that I am not assigning too many projects at one time and keeping it to one focus project. So if you're curious about what my end result is going to look like, let me know if I should make a video about it down below in the comments. Hopefully this video gave you a little bit of insight into whether or not you should use the Notion Sprints feature. And if it did, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up. In my next video, I'm going to be diving into my tech stack and sharing all of the apps that I use to keep my life and biz up and running on a daily basis. Be sure to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss it. Until then, you can catch up on all the features that I am currently loving in Notion in this video next. I will see you in the next one.